Hello, this video will be an insert to an upcoming uh, video because it just keeps sort of growing and growing because there's uh, so much to unpackage amongst there. But a uh, previous one was about Christopher Dunn cherry picking the True Stone Corporation and then using them as some sort of example of what modern technology cannot make the Serapian boxes type of thing. Extreme, like gro ridiculous cherry picking. Well, um, he also, and you'll see other lost ancient high technologists. Um, always quoting, well, there's a sculptor who says he'd have to throw away his tools. Well, that sculptor is Mike Leckie, who works on a small scale and works on soft stones such as marble, not granite. But anyway, in his letter, uh, important, you know, as a stone sculptor, I can say the granite of a Ramses head and figures is an extremely hard stone. Well, no contest. I believe tools much more durable than hardened copper chisels must have been used in the carving process. That'll be the the uh, main point in this video because I'll be like what is hardened copper and also addressing the lost ancient high technology like soft copper and bronze can't do oh, soft soft you know soft soft well actually what is copper firstly hardened or soft copper or annealed copper but also uh, the, the fact that ancient people like the in um, South Americans Egyptians Mesopotamians weren't using the modern pure 99.9% .9 and above copper uh, they were using what, what the ancient Egyptian copper tools would be more accurately described as bronze even before the Bronze Age bronze really relates to tin bronze but they were using arsenical copper but more importantly the an analysis of the artifacts from Egypt shows that the percentage of arsenic in this copper is so high that it cannot be natural that it has you know it shows advanced metallurgy in that sense so what is hard and copper but what's what 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 was the copper that they were actually using in the upcoming video I'll, I'll address that letter from Mike Leckie to Christopher Dunn in its entirety but another important feature from that letter is uh, although the ancient Egyptians had stone chisels and hammers which could cut extremely hard granite um, ev though even with an army of disposable labour completing four large sculptures alike with hand tools will take more time than we can uh, conce conceive of as, as possible well what, what people conceive and reality might be a, a, a different thing especially if you already have a mindset that there must be lost high technology but again uh, Mike Leckie will address uh, stone chisels and hammers do cut granite they work so they do but let's look at the issue of hardened copper and what was the actual material that the Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, was were using, which is described as copper, but is in fact better described as arsenical bronze? Let's begin with a periodic table and the the metals and materials, mineral uh, elements that were being used in the ancient period. And we highlight these, and so we have um, now. Iron Age comes, well actually the Iron Age in Sub-Saharan Africa started around 2500 BC, but just want to highlight these. So we have Iron, Fe, Cu is Copper, C is Carbon. Carbon as in charcoal is exactly the same material that they make diamond out of, it's just arranged differently. Um, diamond is much, you know, you're going to scratch diamond with, I'm sorry, you're going to scratch carbon with diamond. Uh, so just an important point to keep in mind. Arsenic. AS, SN is tin, HG is mercury, AU is gold, and AG is silver. So when they talk about bronze or steel, so we'll go to steel first, but just to put, there are, there, are, there are no bronze, brass, or steel. Bronze, brass, steel does not appear on the periodic table. There are no bronze, brass, or steel mines. What these are is alloys. So for instance, what is steel? Steel is an alloy. It's a mixture of iron with other elements typically carbon so you have mild or low carbon steel is approximately 0.05 percent to one quarter of a percent carbon content add a bit of carbon to steel to iron and you get steel where do, where is iron worked typically in a blacksmith shop what's going around in a black a lot of carbon so even what's described as like iron age is steel in that sense tiny amount of carbon added to iron turns it into steel. Iron and steel are very different materials. A small amount of carbon or chromium or manganese mixed with iron turns it into steel. It's a very different material. 
So steel, it's just iron, not always carbon, but typically it, it's carbon and a tiny amount of carbon in by weight in the iron makes it steel. Very Same thing with uh, copper, a very small percentage of other elements added to copper transforms it into an alloy, which is something very different from the original. Now, low carbon or mild steel is only up to a quarter percent carbon. High carbon steel, which, you know, hard steel is very strong, very hard, but it's also very brittle. It will crack and it will break, very similar to glass. It's brittle. Here's a very hard lathe tool that I smashed against some uh, granite. I'll show you the video in a moment. But these modern hard steel, for for instance, using lathe tools, they're not good for impact. They're hard, but they're brittle. And it will crack and it will fracture. It will break just like glass. I'll show that. But uh, the lost ancient high technology industry actually cite Moscar when it comes to tools such as chisels and hammers, um, stone and copper tools. Like l Literally, they, they say that dolerite hammers, stone hammers, because they're not as hard on Moscar as granite, can't work. This is just ridiculous. But <laughs> so, what is bronze? It's what um, bronze is a copper alloy. So bronze is to copper what steel is to iron. When people think of uh, uh, bronze, they're really thinking about the Bronze Age, which is tin bronze, where you add tin to copper, around about a ten percent tin uh, to ninety percent copper. You can mix it up and down a little bit to get different. Uh, it changes a the way the material reacts, but tin bronze typically 90% carbon, 10% uh, tin, uh, sorry, 90% copper, 10% tin. These Bronze Age tools, are, you know, to be very accurate, will be described as tin bronze tools because bronze steel is an alloy based on iron, bronze is an alloy based on copper. Uh, the Ulaburum shipwreck, um, uh, 10 ingots of copper for every ingot of tin, perfect recipe for tin bronze. Although this isn't the only type of bronze, and that's why I've highlighted arsenic here. Uh, the lost ancient high technology myth, it, they always say soft, co soft copper, can I soft, you know, they're always implying soft copper um, in the Near East, but also in South America, places such as Machu Picchu. They were not using soft copper, they were not using pure copper, they were using copper alloys, bronzes. Um, okay, I'll sh if this isn't now. Let's look at let's just stick now with pure modern copper, which is 99.9% .9 and above. I'll show the video, but okay, um, this is annealed copper sheeting just with a piece of you know paddle pop stick, uh, icicle stick, um, uh, lolly stick, you know, just what you get on your ice creams and, and frozen ice. That can work for copper. That's annealed copper. It's pure copper. It's exactly the same as very hard copper, but it's just it's, it's been annealed. It's in a softened state. That is very similar to the copper you'll find in electrical wiring. It's very flexible. It's you know you wouldn't you know it's very soft as you know flexible, malleable. Terms softness and hardness can be a little bit tricky. So um, when I mean soft, I'm talking about flexible, malleable, ductile. It's you know, flexible essentially. Copper wire is exactly the same as these types of copper bars and copper piping. It's 99% pure copper, but this is but these types of piping and iron bar, uh, copper bars are very, very hard, very rigid. They're inflexible, but it's exactly the same material. All that's happened is they've been treated. Now, again, just a uh, soft temper copper is extremely malleable, annealed copper. That's what's uh, going on here because it's low strength. Heavy gauge, so thickness would be required. Uh, soft. This is a video copper tooling demonstration by the channel Jamie Smith. Here we see annealed copper. Now, uh, you get a copper sheet that's bent, you can't hold it down with sticky tape. That's work hardened copper. But annealed copper, as you're seeing here, is probably the kind of stuff you used at school or in arts and crafts projects. It's annealed copper. It's exactly the same as hard copper, as it's 99.9% .9 copper. It's just been treated to make it softer. Uh, so when most people, you know, lost ancient height, soft copper, soft copper, that's probably what they're thinking of or what's, that's what they want you to think of. But this is 
uh, copper in a particular state. You can now, I'll show examples, you can work hard on copper, turn it into something much harder, but this would be uh, the most people's introduction to copper, and as we'll see in a moment, with a ballpoint pen, she's able to mark the copper to, to do the uh, art. So it's mainly in arts and crafts that this is used, not uh, maybe for flashing on some buildings, but it's not used in construction, that type of thing. With a pencil, with a piece of wood, you can mark this copper. Uh, and it's just like hardened copper, it's exactly the same material, it's just been annealed. And, and we'll show that in a moment, but as uh, George Gold says, you know, there's a saying, you can't have it both ways, but with copper you can. You can the same piece of copper can be made very soft or very hard uh, just by the way you treat it. Now again, you can see just with a pencil, with a... Uh, popsicle stick, lollipop stick, whatever you want to call it, you can work this particular form of copper um, quite easily. This is annealed copper, it's an important feature to remember because when you look at work hardened copper, it's exactly the same material, uh, the, ex all the same atoms are there but just by changing its structure, by heating it and treating it and uh, then beating uh, it cold, you can copper make it much harder. extremely malleable, annealed copper, that's what's uh, going on here because it's low strength heavy gauge, so thickness would be required. Uh, soft annealed copper is not recommended for building applications. Um, and, well, unless using for like flashing, so this, this is soft annealed copper, it's very flexible, it's easy to work. 99.9% .9 pure or above. Now rolled copper is a form of hardened copper. Uh, so rolled copper, co these type of copper, they're very stiff, they're very hard. Cold rolled copper many years ago, but also, well, in ancient times you could just cold beat the copper. So you, you get the copper when it's, you get a copper chisel that's been cast, which is annealed, it's very, it's very soft, and you hammer the edge of it, same with a sword. You cast it and it's, it has not been hardened, but if you just hammer the edge, it turns it into work hardened copper. So these are, whether it's coal rolled, hard drawn, or these other variations of it, it's, it's the same thing where they've turned the, the malleable soft temper copper is now much stronger. Um, that's what's, you know, copper's used, that, that's more of it's used in construction. When I drill um, with copper and granite, I, this is literally the pipe that I get from the hardware, and it is hard drawn. It is hardened. Hard drawn copper is simply soft copper wire that has been reduced in size by pulling it through a series of dies. This is called drawing, and the copper becomes harder and stronger as it is drawn, thus hard drawn. Cold beaten, work hardened copper, essentially. Exactly the same. If I was to take that, heat it up until it's you know, virtually red hot, and then let it cool, oh, it would now be annealed. It would be soft copper. It would be very, very flexible. 99.9 um, .9 and above percent copper is pretty much, it's a very modern thing. Um, now, for instance, even less than that, but half a percent of arsenic in copper reduces the conductivity, the electrical conductivity, by one third. That's why we don't use arsenical copper um, anymore. In Peru, there's a the Peruvian copper is very high, in, naturally high in arsenic, and to mine it and then on sell it, they have to remove the uh, the arsenic from there. Impurities in copper ore, such as arsenic and lead, reduce the electrical conductivity of wiring. For obvious reasons, water pipes containing arsenic and lead are not desirable. So, modern copper is a pure thing, and you'll note that the uh, Higher arsenic copper, whether it's South America, Mesopotamia, or Egypt, tends to also be where people are working with stone. So, copper wiring or annealed copper for used in art and craft, exactly the same material as is very, very hard, hard drawn, work beaten um, copper. Exactly the same stuff. You, you just heat hard copper up, let it cool, it becomes soft, or you work hard and soft copper by by working it, by bending it, by beating it with a hammer flexing it, it actually hardens the copper. I'll put these videos in. Um, so for instance, he makes a little copper bowl. It's very soft, very flexible. 
it's, you know, you just, if you accidentally drop a book on it, it's going to ruin your little copper bowl. But if you beat the copper, it hardens it. And that's why, you know, when you find these, you know, copper bowls, that type of stuff, they don't just bend easily. To harden an old soft, flexible copper, you just beat it with a hammer or, or you, or you. This is a video copper hardening by the channel George Gole. Or Gale, maybe I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but here we see a copper bowl in the annealed or soft state. It's very flexible. If you put this on a table, it's got, you know, and a, a book or a hand goes on it, you're going to completely ruin it. Now he's work hardening the copper. He's just taking that bowl and he's planishing, is the term he uses, or work hardening it. Cold beating is another term for it. When copper's cold, if you hammer it, this works for bronze as well, if you hammer it, it hardens it. That's how the ancients were able to get this soft material and make very sharp, stiff sword blades from it. In this demonstration, we're going to look at plastic deformation of a polycrystalline FCC metal, in this case copper. And in particular, we're going to focus on work hardening. So in this very simple experiment, basically I'm just going to take a copper bar and bend it. So this bar has been annealed which has caused it to recrystallize, so it's got a low dislocation density. So I'm going to take the bar and I'm going to bend it. And you can see that despite me not being terribly strong, this is quite easy for me to do. But if I try and bend it back again, you can see that it's much more difficult. So to show you just how much more difficult it is, I've got a volunteer, someone who's much stronger than me, and he's going to come and give it a go. <laughs> Thank you work the copper it's work hardening this is a sheet of hard copper to anneal it to soften it so you want to be able to you know use it for jewelry and work it easily you just heat it up exactly the same stuff uh, exactly the same material modern 99 percent or above purity copper it can be very soft but it also can be very hard uh, okay I'll show you this video as well how to bend copper pot so you can get hard drawn copper pipes, they'll come in, they'll be straight, or you can get annealed copper tubes, so working in air conditioning and that type of thing. Um, it's annealed, it's very soft, and you'll see this guy, he just bends it around with his hand. It's very easy to make a copper coil. So back to annealed copper, this is a video how to bend copper pipe into coils by the channel Manish. And here we see that's how the copper coils come. You probably, you know, at the hardware, or the, you've seen it with a plumber, probably carries this type of stuff. That's annealed copper pipe, that the copper is in a soft state. It's still 99.9% .9 pure copper, just like any other uh, modern form that you'll get from the hardware or supplier. But the exact same copper it becomes very soft if, if it has been annealed. And you can work harden it, then you can anneal work hardened copper as well. It can go back and forth. This is a copper pipe. 99.9% .9 pure and above, but this is hard drawn copper. It's hardened copper. You're not bending this stuff. It's exactly the same as the bending the copper into coils, but that's annealed, annealed copper. Much more flexible, much more soft. Hard drawn or hardened copper pipe, you're not bending it like that. That's just not happening. Um, as opposed to the hard drawn copper pipe that I use to uh, drill into granite without um, lost ancient you know, high technology diamond material. So this is like a, uh, evidence of ancient high technology part by machining by Uncharted X. He talks about the you know, giant steel cutting wheels that were you know necessary and to quote, the very thin width of a blade is indicated by the lip at the edge of this cut makes it Nothing short of impossible. Nothing short of impossible. So a fancy way of saying it's impossible. But such a saw could have been made by a soft material like copper or bronze and still munched to cap through the basalt. This is what they actually sell. This is what they actually say. They, you know, I'm science research guy. I'm research research. Uh, literally the first cut I ever made in granite, I, I, did the, I did a lost ancient high technology impossible thing. And I use 99% pure copper. I just got a, uh, a copper tube, hammered it out. I began with a straight copper blade. As I cut the granite, the blade got worn out on the edges. It's just you know anyone who's actually worked with you know with anything would you know realize that when because of the action. And I created a 20 foot diameter circular saw blade with the striations in there. 
I literally that was my first cut in granite and literally the lost high technologists are either just completely ignorant in in working anything or it's a scam and they're selling their snake oil and the fact is that when they're presented with the information uh, you know it says I'll oh, leave your comments you know if you've got an opinion leave your co well comments get blocked or deleted and they refuse to address these things because they're selling snake oil if you censor information uh, after the fact then you're a fraud you know it's uh, an error only becomes a mistake once you refuse to correct it um, an error becomes enough becomes a fraud when you censor that information to continue with your profits if you're selling lies uh, if you're suppressing information that's as good as lying and then if you're re and you keep selling this falsehood after the fact for profit then you're a fraud they sell this snake oil even after they know better they still sell this snake oil this this these are frauds that's you know this is a fraudulent industry which is based on suppressing any information you know at the best they're utterly utterly incompetent and the fact that they have to suppress this information proves that they're selling snake oil that it's a fraudulent industry but uh, there's the basics of pure copper but now we have to look at the soft copper tools of ancient Egypt well no it's it's just not the case it's just not the case at all natural cracks this was the same on the other side uh, started flattening this off using a stone hammer now if stone hammers were so bad and steel was so great well firstly I'll use this and first so okay, let's just get straight to it so if I'm using a hard steel chip okay let's let's see what happens when I use this Okay, so firstly, I'm not, you know, like, you're not removing mass, you know, steel is not some super material where you're moving masses of metal. Now, if I was to do masses of stone, you're basically getting the same as a stone hammer. You just have to keep, even with steel chisels, okay, but look what happened to that tool. See how it broke off? All right. Hard steel is not... A material you'd be using for chisels all right just it's just not it break now okay I'll break off the other side now this is the video further explorations at the Aswan quarry in southern Egypt by Brian Foster in the opening party he, he says that the dolerite hammers were planted around Egypt as well so wow to begin with but let's look at what constitutes an experiment for the lost ancient high technologist some random dude grabs a block, taps at it for, you know, not even 20 seconds. And, oh, well, stone, stone hammers, they don't work. I'm like, look, well, this guy just sort of randomly tapped at it. So there you go, case closed. Well, rubbish. This is a video, how the ancient Egyptians crushed granite. Uh, it was called the Alexander Sokolov channel. Now it's the Amphrogenes uh, channel. But uh, rather than tap away for 15 seconds and declare that stone pounders don't work they actually went to a block of granite and as noobs you know they're not they don't have generations of experience behind them they said let's just go out and try it and what happens when you spend more than 30 seconds lost ancient high technology ex experiment you know 30 second it's a failure because it didn't work because some random guy just randomly tapped at a stone without any you know for 15 seconds or whatever it was uh, turns out that if you actually go and put your hands on on the material and start working that you can start to you know, get an idea of what's available and and what's not um, impossible now that one was a rough one but let's look at uh, the trihedral in a cor corner trihedral in a corner in a granite sarcophagus this is impossible by lost ancient high technology because uh, you know well they just use stone tools and work at it for again more than 15 seconds um, and they ach achieve the impossible once more. Uh, you'll find this video on the Scientists Against Myth channel, also on the Alexander Sokolov uh, channel as well. But this is the type of thing that the lost ancient high technologists are desperate, desperate for, for you not to see, which is why they need to 
uh, block, censor, delete, hide or refuse to acknowledge the existence of uh, these type of experiments because if their whole industry is built on it's impossible therefore and well it's, it is so much I, I, yeah it's bunk it's a scam um, and well that's why they need to uh, censor this type of information as well so just with stone tools not even in bringing in copper what's uh, what you're able to do the impossible as they define it so you know again do a little bit of work experiment a little bit and success now there's another interesting one and I'll drop the link it's um, flint versus granite I believe it is a title it's in Russian but so uh, okay let's have a look at a hieroglyph and let's sit down for more than 15 seconds and you know and again as experimentalists not as experienced people stone age people with generations of experience and just take a flint tool and you start tapping away and uh, what do they get do they get uh, success now the, the more beautiful hieroglyphs in Egypt uh, you'll see that you know it, it's not of that standard but if I were to you know spend more than that you know sitting there for half a day tapping away uh, and I were to do a little bit more polishing and you know have again a little bit more experience and bring in a little bit more than the most primitive of tools uh, they're able to you know this is a, you know impossible it's impossible you know they, they didn't have high steel or you know lost ancient high technology machines this is what actual experimentalists and uh, p people do and if again to spend more than 15 seconds Brian Foster style or Christopher Dunn style faking or setting up experiments to fail it's a scam lost ancient high technology although limited I have conducted a few experiments using a stone pounder on granite and it, it's Stone's not a bad tool at all, at, at all. Firstly, for the hammer, you now uh, because of the way that granite works, the shear force, as it's called, uh, granite is likes to break where it's told more than other stones do. So for its hardness, it's also an obedient stone in that way. But also then, once you have your rough surface, just pounding it down with a stone hammer is actually quite uh, good, as even compared to a chisel because of the surface area of the um, stone itself. So. Uh, Stone tools is, you know, I, I would have the most modern, best available tool, a power tool, if I could, if I was working on granite. But these old methods actually work. And again, they're depicted in, in the times we see, even the tool marks are available. Or even though sometimes these tool marks are called a, uh, first stage machining, is <laughs> one of the, the better better terms for uh, for this as well. But again just encourage anyone you know if you if you bel if you're following this if you don't have granite available naturally nearby um, go to a granite countertop type of place and you'll they'll probably give it the off cuts from the bin for free grab a stone pound or a copper tube or a copper blade and do the cutting do the pounding and you'll, th these things actually work they're not a, a terrible idea and then can then go and get a, a chisel and then as try and work with a chisel and see you know it's it's there's not this huge variation between the two there you know again I would choose for more modern tool definitely a power tool because uh, I have the luxury of that option but how did people in the past work well they you know in, 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 before tungsten carbide and all these things people were just working with granite before then using soft steel they didn't use hard steel they used soft steel chisels uh, tempered yes but prior to steel, how did they work? Well, uh, arsenical bronze and stone tools, these work fine. I wouldn't use arsenical, br I'd prefer a stone pounding tool to an arsenical bronze tool. Um, I don't have access to arsenical bronze, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, whether it's steel as well, uh, it's, I mean, the only way to do it is to go and do it hands on and you'll find that, you know, if you spend more than 15 seconds, Brian Foster style, or if you don't cheat and uh, use a machine and then claim you're using it, uh, a hand tool, Brian Foster, um, sorry, Christopher Dunn, just like absolutely busted. He just is a, he's a fraudster in that sense, um, faking experiment results. And so if experiments aren't being designed to fail, if experiments aren't sort of being done, 15 second tap, 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 oh, well, that doesn't work. Or, yeah, you know, if you go and do it, and you'll see that, uh, you know, you'll be a much better researcher than the lost ancient high technology industry who just 
uh, when they conduct experiments, they fake it, or they don't conduct experiments at all. Yeah, and there's some dude tapping away ten times on a block. Oh, it doesn't work. You know, hands up, I surrender. Well, it must be said in regards to the made-for-public documentary type of TVs, um, especially those conducted by Mark Lerner, uh, are not done very well. And uh, it's it's a bit cringy to be uh, now. But firstly, let's look. There was a documentary called the Egyptian uh, Job, a National National Geographic series. They made um, copper chisels, and they wanted to split stone. The they specified they wanted the use of pure copper. The blacksmith who they hired to make the chisel said, "No, no, you don't want pure copper. You want an alloy." And they said, "No, no, we want r pure copper." And so he melted down some. You know, modern copper piping and the experiment was a success but um, when it comes to again these the, the, the documentary type of series that you see I have to be honest that uh, they have not done a very good job Mark Lerner couldn't even move a 20 ton um, block uh, as where Wally Wallington can do it very easy and it's, uh, it's unfortunate very unfortunate that the mainstream documentaries do uh, you know set big, the pressures of production or whatever the reason is? They do a really bad job of explaining these things, and they and the people conducting them are, are not uh, the ones that should be. Um, that's that's a real shame. Another example would be the riddles of the Sphinx documentary. Again, Mark Lerner, uh, they try to reconstruct the Sphinx's nose. Uh, I did a video in regards to this, and again, it's not very. It's a bit cringe, to be honest. Um, the way the, sh the, the tools they chose, the way they worked the tools, you see that they're not even really cold beating the tools, they're heating them up, reshaping them and they go straight back and it took, and then they had to use, to get it done in time, they had to bring in modern tools, they didn't have a, you know, the apprentice or the specialist chisel worker, when the chisel got blunted or bent, the actual person using the chisel would run off, heat it up, bang it out and then go back without really cold working it as well and again they specify uh, the use of pure copper rather than arsenical bronze, which um, arsenical bronze is just like steel. It is not a super weapon, but when you, you hear this soft copper thing, you know, again, by the you know the, the mainstream television documentaries, but especially by the lost ancient high technologists, it's not really doing justice to the reality of the situation. This is from the clip uh, granite cutting and drilling. So they, they, they cut granite, they drill granite, and it's sort of, a, you know, it's, it appears to be the only experiment in existence um, amongst lost ancient high technologists. Here he is chiseling a piece of granite, and, uh, well, the tool, uh, he's using a bronze tool. But again, not spe I, I would be curious, as it's, is it, has it been work hardened? But also, like, why would you use a bronze tool when you can use a better tool, which would be a stone pounder? We actually have depictions of Egyptians working at making um, these types of statues and they use stone tools. Uh, as we saw mentioned earlier, like firstly hardened steel is not uh, really good and if you don't have steel that doesn't mean you can't do it and just as we've moving them, they actually sh show them working and they would use stone tools. Now you'll see other pictures where they're using chisels. Well, where would you use arsenical bronze chisels on? Where would they work really, really well? Well, granite is a small part of Egyptian t temple architecture or whatever. You know, there's a focus on granite, but m the majority of Egypt is limestone and sandstone, in which case copper is a perfectly wonderful tool to use, even pure copper, let alone arsenical copper. There's a great documentary uh, series called What the Ancients Knew. This is from the, from the episode Egypt, and here we see Dennis Stocks, and he is working on a piece of limestone. And again, um, you can't work a copper with limestone. It's something that you'll hear, you know, sort of bright inside and, and uh, mystery history, all these types of people. But, um, well, you, you can't. And again, it's curious that these people have so much time and energy devoted to it. Well copper chisel d does it work on on granite uh, I just recommend watching the whole episode what the ancients knew Egypt because he also goes into surveying tools and how to fit stones together and how they're able to achieve uh, these things with very simple uh, tools just you know used well
but um, when it comes to l limestone or sandstone, copper, especially arsenical bronze, is going to work fine. And it even shows here in a moment how using a flint tool uh, or chert, which again, which is you find dolerite hammers and flint shaving tools, grinding tools everywhere, everywhere all over Egypt. These tools. Uh, do work, and even if you were to replace them with steel, it's you, you're not going to achieve. You know, you know, it's not going to be dram dramatically better. It's just going to mean less maintenance on on your tools, but a greater expense. So as we'll see in a moment, they shave uh, the limestone with chert. So how do you, you know how do you get the smooth f finish, and how to get them to fit it in? Well, flint. <laughs> just as we saw uh, earlier, these tools do absolutely work, and it's like. Wh why is this being, you know, suppressed? Uh, and that's what I, it has to be suppression because it, uh, it's being censored uh, by the industry of lost ancient high technology. All right, pardon again. You know, I I don't do slick productions. They're just sort of hodgepodge videos that I just um, put together. But you know, you'll find these links uh, in the description. And just to address the elephant in the room, because you know, whenever you sort of try and um, do some of this, it's always well, what about this? What about that? So just to, uh, this will be an insert for the upcoming video looking at the uh, letter by Mike Lecky to Christopher Dunn, which is held up as some sort of, um, well, a cringe um, in regards to colossal granite sculptures. And we'll be looking at people who are actually working in granite making colossal sculptures versus Mike Lecky, who works with modern tools in soft stones on a very small scale, uh, cherry picking in extremis. Okay, part, you know, this is just the way I do things, so, you know, if you don't like it, that's how it is. Uh, I don't do this slick sort of stuff, but, uh, yeah, just to deal with that elephant in the room, and I'll put the link, and when I, I'll, very soon I'll put up the next part and go through some of these, well, just cringe details, um, cherry picking, I would say, like uh, deliberate uh, misinformation, um, the censoring of important information, uh, cherry picking the worst possible expert and then presenting that as the best possible expert to talk with these things and even when uh, con yeah, contradicting themselves within the same letter. We'll get to that next episode but just to lay down this uh, cynical cop a bit and uh, and also again it's not it's not um, I think that the, the mainstream public made for public consumption videos especially those by Mark Lerner are pretty tragic uh, when it comes to moving stone, cutting stone etc. Uh, given that there are other people like actually doing a, um, a much better job, but anyway, that's uh, that's the TV biz for you, you know. Um, yeah. Anyway, more to come. Just this will be the insert. Cheers. Have a good one.